Hello, and welcome, dear saints of St. Peter Evangelical Lutheran Church, as well as all of our dear brothers and sisters in Christ who are joining us here today. Uh, well, we're back after a couple-week break here for our Tuesday devotions, and as we uh, begin a new year, uh, a new month here in January as well, I thought we'd do something a little bit different uh, for our devotions. And so, uh, beginning here today, and for at least the next several weeks, we'll be using uh, this little handy book here. It's, uh, it's called Day by Day, 365 Devotional Readings for Martin Luther. And so, uh, as we do these devotions, we'll hear a passage of Scripture, we're here, we will hear Martin Luther kind of uh, take something from that passage and expound on it, and I'll add a few thoughts to that as well. But certainly I pray uh, that these devotions will be a great blessing for you. Now let's begin our uh, devotions here with a word of prayer. We pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, without your help, our labor is useless, and without your light, our search is in vain. Invigorate our study of your holy word, that by due diligence and right discernment, we may establish ourselves and others in your holy faith, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now just a few notes here uh, as far as this little devotion book goes. Uh, first off, you can uh, get one of these for yourself. Uh, it's on Amazon. Uh, you also can find it at Concordia Publishing House. That's CPH. Dot org, uh, and you can pick one of these up uh, for use in your own home as well uh, for devotions throughout the week uh, for yourself or with your family. It, it's really a handy tool to have. Uh, and uh, what, how it's set up, I'll see if I can get it on the camera at least a little bit. You have the scripture there at the top, and then below that there's the reading, uh, or the writing rather, from Martin Luther as he kind of explains uh, what's going on in that passage as well. So it's really a handy tool uh, for, for your home devotions. And so today, uh, we'll read the devotion for uh, January the 5th. And first, uh, we'll start with the verses from Holy Scripture. So today, the devotion will be from James chapter 5. We're going to read here verses 13 through 18. This is right at the very end of the book of James. So this is James 5, verses 13 to 18. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. Thus far, the reading from James. And now we'll hear uh, from Martin Luther, specifically on the topic of prayer. And so Luther writes, These words... In my name, and he cites there John 16, verse 23. These words in my name demand faith when one prays. They show that our own worthiness should not demand that we pray or achieve fulfillment, and that our unworthiness should not prevent us from praying. They show that we are surely heard solely for the sake of Christ, our only mediator and high priest before God. Therefore, therefore our prayer must be centered in him alone. All Christendom prays in this manner. It concludes and seals all its prayers and cries with the words, Through Jesus Christ our Lord. In this way it brings its offerings to God in faith. Therefore you should do likewise, in order that you may defend yourself against the terrible thoughts which detain and deter you from prayer. Be sure not to let the devil delude you when he tells you that you are unworthy, but for this very reason, fall on your knees when you feel that you are not worthy and cannot become worthy. Cling to Christ. Make your prayer dependent on him. By no means be in doubt or uncertain when you pray, but believe confidently that your prayer has come before God, has reached its goal, and has already been granted. For it has been offered in the name of Christ and has been concluded with the Amen, with which Christ himself here confirms his word. And thus far, the writing from Dr. Luther. 
And so as we heard in the, uh, the reading there from James, and we heard Luther pick up on as well, that when we consider prayer, and when we consider who ought to pray and, and how uh, they ought to pray and all those things, the real key in all of this is faith in Christ. You know, uh, James there picks up on that. The prayer of, of a faithful man has great power, right? And there the emphasis is on the faith, right? The faith that clings to Christ alone. And that's what Luther then picks up on as well. For he says, it does not depend on if I am worthy or unworthy. It does not depend on whether I pray well or, or kind of stumble through it all. It depends only on Christ. And so I love those words there from Luther. And these are words to certainly let be in your mind and on your heart. When you consider prayer, when, when you join uh, with your family, or, or perhaps you pray on your own, uh, that your prayer is not dependent on you, on how strong your faith might be, on, on how well worded it might be, although the devil and the world will try to make you think that's true. Rather, as Luther says as well, it's precisely when we feel unworthy that we ought to pray. It's even when we recognize that really there's nothing in me that should make God listen to my prayers. There's nothing that I can say or, or do in my life that should uh, cause God to listen to me. But when we pray in Christ, when we have faith that it is indeed, as we say, through Jesus Christ that we offer our prayers, well, then we have confidence. We have confidence that the prayer will be heard, that God will answer it, however it is, he best will answer it. And that, in fact, as Luther points out, it's as good as done already. For this is truly what prayer is. Prayer is the faithful Christian calling out to their heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ. And so to really highlight that point that Luther drove home there as well, we cling to Christ. We make our prayers dependent on him because he is our mediator. He is our high priest. He is the one who stands between us and God. He receives our prayers and he, he takes them to the heavenly father himself. And so we know that it is indeed uh, Christ's work. It is, it's Christ's doing that our prayers are heard. It's only because of him, because of his death and his resurrection, which have forgiven me all my sins, which have washed me clean, and now in that faith, uh, now call me to call out to my Father, to pray to him uh, in that great faith, and to believe, uh, to believe that just as Christ rose from the dead, so too will my heavenly Father hear and answer my prayers according to his good and gracious will. And so, dear Christians, dear faithful saints of God, let this be a great encouragement to you, uh, not only to pray, but to pray with confidence. That it's not dependent on you. It's dependent on Christ. And as we know from scripture, Christ will never fail. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And even as we're reminded elsewhere, his strength is made perfect in weakness. And so though we are weak but lowly, we are strong in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is where our prayers really do find their strength. And so some wonderful words there, first from James, also from Martin Luther, to encourage us as we begin a new year uh, to be in prayer, to always be calling out to our Heavenly Father, and to always be bringing our petitions before Him. Now with that, why don't we close our devotion here for this day with a word of prayer. We'll use the collect of the day from this last Sunday. We pray. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word, Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, again, dear saints, we'll, we'll keep this same kind of devotion going here, at least for a few weeks, kind of try it out. And so uh, if you would like to leave some comments below in the video or uh, call or text, uh, let me know what you thought of this devotion, uh, that would be fantastic as we're kind of trying something a little bit different here, hopefully a little more bite-sized and really will help us focus in on the word of God here. And so with that, the Lord's richest blessings on the rest of your day and we depart in peace.